Okay. I'm delighted to introduce the Reverend April Larson, the first woman bishop in the ELCA. You're cutting into my seconds. <laughs> what a time, what a day for me to be here with you, and I'm so thankful to God and to our wonderful church. I grew up with color everywhere. My mother loved it. Her flowers were endless and broadly varied. It was impossible for mom to have too many flowers or varieties or colors. In a town where white houses are the right houses, our house was never white. Our yards were filled with vast beauty of God's creation. I have lived to see the day where the Conference of Bishops is starting to remind me of my mother's gardens. My good friend, uh, Andrea de Grutenestal, the second woman bishop elected in our church three years after me, called me early this summer, and we said over and over and over again, did we ever think we would live to see such a day? Years ago, I was sitting next to one of my dearest bishop friends, in addition to his deep faith, he was a feminist and a person of justice. I said to this dear and trusted friend, what do you think would be a good percentage of women clergy in the Conference of Bishops? I could see his discomfort. <laughs> he paused and answered, 35%? I replied, how can this be a good number? Across the entire world, 60% of the adults in the pews that worship are women. How is 35% of the Conference of Bishops a good percentage? Well, I thought I would never live to see what has happened these past two summers in our church. All the women, new women elected and joining the Conference of Bishops. And did we ever? On the 25th celebration of the ordination of women, did we ever imagine a celebration like we will begin tonight, 50, 40, and 10? We are changing, we are being made new. God is busy with us. 30 plus years ago, Marlene Helgemo and others dreamed of such a church. At the last church assembly of my predecessor body, the ALC, I met Marlene for the first time, and she and others with great joy sparkled around that event and envisioning this dream of opening the doors and seeing all the people. Even in our celebrating, Lutherans always understand that one of the cores of our theology is that we are totally saint and totally sinner at the same time. Simul justus et peccator. We are not afraid in our most joyous celebrations to look at our sin. I stand in awe of the women clergy who in our brokenness have stayed in the ELCA struggling, but not quitting.
Amazing, we celebrate you tonight. By God's extravagance, forgiveness, and grace, we enter into the kickoff of this year-long celebration, 504010. Kicking it off with this banquet tonight, we will stand side by side, dance, sing, and lament, and eat. Very Lutheran. <laughs> 45 years ago, when I entered seminary, we had no women professors. I never ever heard a single word about any biblical women in scripture, except one day, I will never forget where I was sitting in that church history class. My professor said one of the core difference between the Roman Catholic and the Orthodox is explained with this phrase. For the Roman Catholic, it is Mary, mother of our Lord. For the Orthodox, it is Mary, mother of our Lord. That's the total summary of my biblical learning about women in scripture at seminary. Like so many others, the day I heard my first woman preach, sure, it was my own voice speaking. These are the fun stories. And ask any of these very early women to share the difficult and sometimes abusive experiences they have had in our beloved church, fully saint and fully sinner side by side. We are church. And we never forget, we hope, those within, those outside, and those in other church bodies all over this world who are in need of our active solidarity and accompaniment walking beside them. When our uh, daughter-in-law, Renee, lost her son, uh, her husband, our son, in the Haiti earthquake, the night before ordination, this deeply grief-stricken young widow, I shared with her a blessing that I wrote for her that evening. And now I share it with particularly the women clergy, but also our beloved church today. Proclaimer to the proclaimers, priest to the priest, Christ-bearer to the Christ-bearers, you are and have been and will be a blessing to so many. Your mothers raise their hands and bless you. Apostle Mary Magdalene, evangelist number one from Samaria, the great confessor Martha, the widow who gave up everything, prophets of the great reversal Mary and Hannah, women of courage and vision Esther, Ruth, Deborah, prophet, musician, liberator Miriam, Women of justice, Syrophoenician women, Shifra and Pua, daughters of Zelophehad, models of Christ, and the unnamed priest anointing Jesus' head, pastor to Jesus. Mothers in faith, Sarah and Hagar, missionary Priscilla, to you, Dearest priests, pastors, your mothers in the faith bless you and give thanks to God for your call as priest, leader, mother in faith, shepherd to God's people. We celebrate you and we give God thanks for your leadership.